Today on the bench here, we've got the ROG Z690-E Strix Gaming Motherboard. And this is the granddaddy where I've got to straight up critique the pricing between Australia and America, where in the US, you guys can get this board for 485 USD, but then in Australia, it's coming close to 900 Aussie dollars, which if we saw the tough gaming review that I recently did, there was nowhere near this kind of price discrepancy where if I convert 485 US dollars into AUD, we've got something around 670 Aussie dollars. So this is coming into that high end territory of pricing and you would expect this board to deliver and it indeed does deliver. There's not really any one fault I can find with this board, except one little critiquing point, which I'll get out of the way with first, and that is I would like to see a power and reset button on the board, especially for this price. So let's get straight into the VRM details, the most important part of a motherboard. Here we've got 18 plus one power stage design featuring ISL MOSFETs, 5K metallic capacitors, and also a digital RAW PWM controller. And this overall means that the temperatures are phenomenal. It's actually quite hot when I tested this board out in terms of ambient temperatures, coming in at 29 degrees ambient. And here's where the 12900K out of the box, we're getting around 230 four watts max 360 from the wall very efficient vrm staying very cool with the maximum vrm board temperature being 65 degrees then the heat sink going up to 56 degrees so overall if you want to overclock as well and you've got a high-end water cooling set then you may be able to get the 12900k to 5.2 5.3 gigahertz i managed to get it to 5.1 gigahertz with a corsair h115i platinum and then at 5.2 gigahertz we did boot up but it did crash out even giving it 1.47 volt, which is 70 millivolts higher than the stability on the 5.1 gigahertz overclock, which means we are seriously catching those diminishing returns at these levels. So here's where the out of the box tuning for this CPU, it does a great job. Five gigahertz all core out of the box and at those temperatures and wattages, it's actually a very good result. Where I managed to clock it to 5.1 gigahertz all core and draw an extra roughly 15 watts going up to around 250 watts. The one thing you may notice by looking at this motherboard is these heat sinks are absolutely massive. And it's not only on the VRM, it's also on the M.2 slots. Even the top M.2 slot itself is PCIe 5.0 X4 support for M.2s. And even though those M.2s, I'm yet to see them, the PCIe 4.0 device we had here was remaining very cool under this heat sink design. So very good temperatures, not only on the VRM, but also on the M.2 support. Then that top heat sink also has RGB, which you can control in basic sense in the BIOS. And then you've got the software and windows if you wanna do a little bit more, which does have extendability through those five volt addressable RGB ports. But you've also got two 12 volt ports, one of those located top and bottom each. They're going through the rest of the board. We've got a PCIe 5.0 X16 slot at the top connected via the CPU. Then the rest of the slots, we've got a 1X and then a 4X and then an 8X down the bottom, which goes through the chipset, which is a PCIe 4.0 chipset. Then we've also got that dual M.2 design at the bottom, both PCIe 4.0 X4 support, and then one of those having hybrid SATA support on top of that. Then at the rear of the board, they've done a very good job with input output here. I've never seen a board so crammed with features at the back of the board featuring 10 type A ports in total, and then two type C's on top of that, which do have Thunderbolt 4 support. Then we've got a 2.5G Intel NIC, which overall all the speeds on the USB ports and the NIC itself were very smooth, didn't miss a beat. Then you've got Wi-Fi 6E support, which I actually can't in the studio here test the speeds because I don't have a device to stress out the 6E and test if it's good. But the Wi-Fi signal strength itself was coming up very strong. And then we've got a BIOS flashback feature and a clear CMOS at the back, as well as your display and HDMI outs. Then for the onboard audio, here's where they're using the Realtek ALC 4080, which they call it the Supreme FX solution. And this did a phenomenal job on the numbers. They've got a Savvy Tech SV3H712 amp, and this gave out honestly phenomenal numbers, not just on the frequency response curve, where we only had like five hertz and under a minus 4.5 decibel roll off, which is extremely good. You're gonna get a very rich 
audio listening experience, even on mid to high range cans out of this solution where the low end bass is gonna come through very rich as we can see with that frequency response curve. And then for the crosstalk, that was simply phenomenal, coming with very low levels of minus 92 decibels on both left and right, all the way up to 100 volume, which means you're gonna be able to hear footsteps on the left, perfectly clear and separated from the right, where it's not gonna come through unless it's intended to by the person introducing the sound. And then onto the mic import, here's where they've done a really good job. If you wanted to use this reliably for streaming, then you could hook up a mic and you'd have a clear mic input all the way through 100 volume up to plus 30 decibels. Though it does look like there is some kind of noise suppression being used, so your voice work will be a little bit inferior to that of a dedicated solution. So do keep that in mind though. We're gonna quickly interlude and talk about the AI overclocking and the BIOS. And here's where they make a big point on the box here. You've got the AI auto overclocking, so it's gonna auto overclock your CPU up to its maximum level. And it did a good job. It found the 5.1 gigahertz overclock on this CPU, which is what I'm comfortable with, with the cooling solution I've got, and also the ambient temperatures. But it did so whilst it was dropping down to 4.5 gigahertz during the test. So it wasn't anywhere near as reliable as a full manual stable overclock at 5.1 gigahertz. So I'd assume that ASUS will update that in the BIOS and get that functioning perfectly. Though this is a DDR5 motherboard and in the BIOS itself, you have the ability to also lock in XMP DDR5 profiles. Here we've got the Corsair Dominator memory that goes at 5200 megahertz CL36. And that locked that in absolutely fine, no problems. And then going through the rest of the BIOS, and here's where you have all the features you need and then some, and it's also laid out very well. So if you're a beginner, you're gonna be able to get into BIOS overclocking very easy with this board. And then of course, if you're an advanced overclocker, I'm not gonna to need to explain to you what you can do with this motherboard. Though if it's anything for Zeus, I would like to see them introduce RGB control within the BIOS, as well as that internet update feature. They're two features that I do like having in the BIOS. They are handy and they do save time. Though you've also got PWM fan control and you've got nine headers located on this board so definitely a lot of headers for fans and then included with this board they do throw in an m.2 card and you do get the external antenna so they're the main two things you also get some sticker sheets and stuff like that included and your SATA cables but then the last two cool features that they have added onto this board is the bios code readout i do like having this on boards especially if i'm using them on test systems as they'll tell you what is wrong if something is not booting up especially in the case of a faulty graphics card, that B2 error is often a common one that I do come into with faulty graphics cards. So it is good to see that on board. Then they've also introduced this interesting system of uninstalling your graphics card by pressing the button on the right hand side of the motherboard instead of having to get into this annoying PCIe latch here, which if you've got one of those big graphics cards, especially with the back plate, it is a real pain to get into that latch. So they've made it so that the latch is actually over the side of the board and very easy to get to. Though with those numbers and testing out of the way, it's time for me to give you guys a conclusion and also my thoughts and opinions on the Z690-E ROG Strix Gaming Motherboard. <laughs> Wi-Fi too. So the naming is getting quite extensive nowadays, just like the Tough Gaming. Uh, that one's got a massive header as well. So besides the naming being extensive, the board is very extensive in its feature set. The VRM, they do a great job of that. They've done a great job on the audio, the Wi-Fi 6E, the input output is phenomenal on the back. The functionality of the BIOS and how well it works in practice are all things that if you're buying a motherboard of this caliber, you definitely want them to hit the mark. And they have certainly hit that mark though. I will point out that there are some things like the AI overclocking. I'm sure they will address that with a BIOS update and the power and reset button. That's just more of a personal pet peeve where I use these on test benches a lot. So I like to have those features personally, but I'm sure a lot of people could live without an onboard power and reset button. Though circling back to that price in the USD, it's priced at that high range level. It does deliver. In Australia, the pricing compared to the US, I would like to see a Zeus get on top of that and fix that for Aussies. Because if it's anything, I don't like to see the Aussies get ripped off, especially when I know the other boards from the ASUS range are coming in with much fairer prices when we compare the Aussie pricing versus the United States dollar pricing. The one thing I will point out was I was using an eight pin, single eight pin CPU connector for the initial testing. 
and I noticed that the temperatures were getting hot and the hottest temperature I saw from the infrared was actually coming from the CPU 8 pin. So if you are using a 12900K and say you're going over 230 watts power usage, I would recommend getting a second eight pin CPU power connector, or even if you're on an eight plus four pin motherboard, definitely utilize that extra CPU power connector for the 12900K, which does clock very high and does use quite a bit of power even out of the box. The overall great board, great aesthetic. If you can stomach the price, it is definitely going to deliver. And with that aside, I hope you guys enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Also let us know in the comment section below, what do you think of the Z690, I'm just gonna call it the Z690E, Strix Gaming. That's it, we're not gonna go into the rest of the naming. <laughs> Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always. Just like this question of the day here, which comes from, it's quite a long one. It comes from uh, Adam Hymas. And they ask, so interestingly, I've been running my 5700 as a 5700 XT. So that's an RX 5700 BIOS flash to an RX 5700 XT uh, for almost two years now. Only today, the clock and memory speeds dropped to zero and had to reflash it to a 5700. No longer will it work when flashed as a 5700 XT. Anyone else experience this? So to answer that question, it's basically you've been using it for two years. I just say it's degradation where the 5700 may have not been as good of a bin as a 5700 XT. So yes, initially it did work fine as a 5700 XT at those higher speeds, but now over time, it's slightly degraded to the point where it can no longer run at those higher speeds. So it will run at the 5700 speeds and you will get more life out of it. So that's one of those things that I did say in the video, those speeds aren't guaranteed. It is a luck of the draw thing, but at least you had two years of higher performance than what the 5700 was initially intended to give. Hope that answers that question and I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon if you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content then be sure to hit that sub button, ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.